Six years ago, I bought my first programming list book. It was cracking the coding interview. It was going to give you a collection of problems that you need to solve in order to actually ace the technical coding interview. I used that book as my prep when I had my Google interview. And weeks later, the interviewer told me, we are not moving forward with your candidacy. They didn't give me any feedback. I never got any like advice on like what I'm supposed to do or how I can actually improve. And the book failed me. Eventually, I failed more interviews and slowly learned time and time and time on how to actually improve. And eventually I got an offer at Citibank. Now I've solved over 1,200 leak code problems and I'm not afraid of coding interviews. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the five things that are wrong with solving lists in 2024. 10 years ago, God blessed us and he gave us leak code as a website. He also gave us cracking the coding interview. It was the best era to be a software engineer because all you need to do was just buy the book, do the list, and you would ace the interview and you have like a job offer paying you $200,000 a year or whatever. And now we have completely free lists like the Blind 75, which inspired offshoots of it, like the Neat Code 150, the Pareto problem set, and even my own list, the Ray 360. So now we have tons of books, tons of problems, but software engineers are still failing interviews in 2024. And why is that the case? What is wrong with lists? In this video, I'm going to be going down the five reasons why following a list is stopping you from improving and passing your job. Interviews. The first problem with following a list is that one, you don't know how companies are actually evaluating their candidates. Each company has their own little rubric that they're using to sell to value their candidates. And you doing Lico problems isn't actually a part like is not on the list. Right. It's more things like, oh, how are they communicating? How is their code style? What are these things? Right. And if you don't know what these things are, then knowing the list, solving the problems on that list are not going to tell you or lead to you actually, you know, passing that portion of the rubric. So, yes, if you do finish the entire list, yes, it's good. Yes, it can help you get there. But you're still missing like that little part of like, OK, you need to have the coding style. OK, you need to make sure that you're communicating. Oh, OK, how are you? solving the bugs. Oh, like what's like your general impression to the interviewer? What things are you saying to make the interviewer think that you are a strong engineer? All of these things matter and they will directly lead to you passing your interviewers, but they don't actually get fixed if you just solve lists. Number two, you don't learn any actual concepts. You're just memorizing code, right? If you're doing that, it doesn't matter if you complete the list and you check mock, check all the bar problems off. If you don't actually learn the concepts behind each of the problems, you're not going to improve. Solving the list is not about memorizing the code. It's not about remembering like, oh, this problem goes with this. It's about learning concepts and then you apply those concepts to other problems. If you can't memorize the concepts, if you can't learn the concepts, and if you're just solving problems on a checklist, you're going to fail. Because in a real interview, yes, they might give you that exact same problem, but they also might just give you a slight variation of it. And if you memorize code, you're not going to have any idea of how to apply it to that slight variation. Number three, you start skipping problems on along the list, right? So you skip the problems that say hard. That's like really, really bad. And that's bad because it's a part of the list for a reason. And it's a part of the list because you need to learn that underlying concept that applies to it. And what this is going to cause you to do is that when you show up to the interview, there's going to be a gap in your knowledge. And if they test you on that gap or of that concept, you're not actually going to be able to pass the interview and you'll fail it. And then you don't get the job offer, right? Which is just like, that's the reason why we're doing all of this anyways. So you need to follow the actual list. You need to do every single problem that's on that list. The fourth problem with lists is that people, a lot of software engineers never finish the list. This is even worse than what I said before, where you only solve some of them, but there's a lot of people who can only solve 20 problems out of a 100 problem list. And because of that, they just fail. Now, Necode 150 list is not gonna help you solve more problems. Right. Solving the blind 75 is not going to help you with this problem of solving more problems. And the first like the core concept of this is that like one, people are just procrastinating. They're pushing it out, avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it when they just need to take action. Now, they're very, very scared about problems that are hard. They don't want to solve those because but like you only get better if you actually start improving now. And so you need, need, need to work on what's going to be like the next step forward to you actually getting good at lead code, which is you solve the problem, right? That is like the one step that you can make that's going to push you into the positive direction, right? And so instead of saying, I'm going to solve lead code sometime in the future, you say, I'm going to solve lead code right now. Why? So that you can improve right now. By the way, I have a free school community where I walk you through step by step 
how to do these things. And I do live Q and A's to help you. If that sounds helpful, then join the group, take action right now, move in the positive direction. That's going to get you one step closer on slowly improving and going to your journey of like getting a job. You need to have good motivation. Like aside from taking action and not procrastinating, you need to have good motivation, right? You cannot have external motivation of I want more money. I want this. I want this thing. I want a car. You'd have internal motivation. Helping your family is an example of good motivation. Trying to help the world is an example of good motivation. Loving problem solving for the sake of just solving problems is really, really good motivation. And these things are going to help you like push yourself and make when it comes to like you're struggling on like, which should you do? Should you watch television for 20 hours? Should you eat ramen noodles or should you solve leak code problems? Right. It's going to help you gather, gather and gain like the, the, the right process onto that, the right path um, between like all those different options that you can choose from. And the other thing too is like meditation helps a lot. So if you meditate, like you implicitly gain all of like the things that I kind of just mentioned. The other problem I see with lists is that you don't know what to do after the list, right? There's no actual guide on like, oh, well, you need to do this after you finish this list. And so there for a lot of people, they finish the list. They did all of it, you know, before, but they're still like not they're still struggling on their interviews and they're still like not they don't know like really where to go. And this can't be fixed with doing like a leak code list. It can't be fixed with doing like a blind 75 or whatever list. It, it gets fixed by having like some kind of roadmap that's after that. Now, the roadmap that I followed and which I would recommend to you is to do zero track or do contests. You need to do either of those two and or both. Even better is that you do contests and you also do zero track. Zero track is an assortment of all the leak problems by ELO so that you can just solve the problems that are about at your skill level and continue to improve. I personally did that and that's why I've gone from, you know, like struggling when I was solving problems, I would solve 200 problems and I would never improve to doing the zero track problems. And I would actually improve and actually see progress. And I was actually learning a ton and I've become like one of the best in the world of lead code. Overall, like the Neat Code 150 list is good. The Blind 75 list is good. Grind 169 list is good, but they do have limitations, right? And just because you know, oh, let me just solve the list, LOL. That's not actually going to lead to you having a success because most software engineers know I need to do this list. Most software engineers are still failing interviews. And the reason behind that is because there's tons of things that are involved in interviews. There's the communication aspect. You have the the fact that you need to solve like the right problems that are on the list. The fact that like you need like some kind of roadmap for after the fact that, that you also need motivation some and not like I want money motivation, but like some kind of like internal driving force that's causing you to solve those problems. And when you have all of those things, that's when you get the technical interview or at least, you know, you just get lucky. But for a lot of software engineers who are failing their interviews, I think this is like you do fix these things off the list and you'll improve drastically in your interviews. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any other questions, I again am free in like the school community. You can free and feel free to send me a message and I will most likely answer it. I'm also working on a program that's dedicated to helping you guys get interviews. You have at least one year of experience. Um, I think this is going to help you. And I'm currently trying to like build this out and, and make sure that it's really good. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.